Hello Algebra 2 folks and welcome to graphing of polynomial functions. Let's examine this first graph and see what we can conclude about this function. So first and foremost, how many turns does this graph have? If you're looking, you can see that this graph has two curves, so it probably has two turns. Now, if we're talking about the degree, um, one of the things that I can say about this degree is that I know that this degree is odd. For sure, I know this degree is odd. Why do I know it's odd? The reason why I know it's odd is because the arrows are going in opposite direction. Remember we talked about that? When the arrows go in opposite direction, it's odd. Now, I could possibly say that it could have a degree of 3. The reason why I could say that it might have a degree of 3 is because that it has 3 x-intercepts, okay? Now, does that mean that it doesn't have more than a degree of 3? Probably not. We could probably say it might have a degree of 5. I don't really know enough about the information to say that it's for sure a 3 degree, but I'm going to take my best guess that this is a degree of 3 and that we know it's going to be an odd number because the arrows are opposite. Now, when we talk about the leading coefficient, we're talking about, remember, the right-hand behavior. So what is the right side of the graph doing? The right side of the graph is going up. So if the right side of the graph is going up, then we know that we have a positive leading coefficient. Okay? So that is what we can say about this graph. Two turns, possibly a degree of three, definitely an odd degree, and that it has a positive leading coefficient. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some graphs. I'm going to have to erase this now so that I can go ahead and go to the next steps. So now what we need to do is we need to get into our graphing calculator, our Desmos graphing calculator, desmos.com or download it on our app through iPhones, okay? If you don't have an iPhone and you have a Droid, you have to go through um, your internet and then download it that way. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and graph this next function, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to go to my Desmos Dot com graphing calculator and I am going to click on this button right here now notice um, this is where I am going to put the function now before I go ahead and type that function in maybe I can answer a couple of these questions so let's see if I can answer a couple of these questions what is the degree of this function it's a three so I'm gonna say that it has a degree of three how many turns does that mean it could possibly have? Well, it could have two or less. How many x-intercepts will it have? Well, it should have three, or it could have less, because some of those could be the same intercept. Remember, we talked about double roots yesterday. What is the right arrow behavior going to do? Well, remember, we know what the right-hand arrow behavior is going to do based on A. So if I look at A here, a is a positive 3. So if my A is positive, that means my right side is going to go up. Okay? Now, what's my arrow behavior on my left going to do? Well, remember that the left-hand arrow behavior has to do with your degree. And our degree is 3, which is an odd number. And an odd number we know that the arrows will go in opposite directions. So if the right is going up, the left is going to go down. Okay, now we need the rest of this graph and we need to be able to graph this in order for me to find my increasing and decreasing intervals. So now this is where I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and I am going to plug in my function right here. Okay, now some of you already have this keyboard that pops up on your graph. If it pops up, great. If it's not popping up, go show keyboard and hit that little button. Now let's go ahead and type it in. Y 
equals 3x, and I want a power of 3, so I'm going to hit a to the b, 3, then I got to arrow down, so I'm back down to where I need to be, subtract 9x plus 1. Now I'm going to hide this keyboard because I don't want that anymore. Okay, and here's my graph. It's really awesome. I go, how do I get a table? So what I do is I hit this little wheel, and you can see that it's popping up edit list, and then I'm going to convert to a table, and voila, I got my table. Okay, so I am going to come over here, and I'm going to fill in my table. So the values that I fill in are everything I see. So negative 2, 5, negative 1, 7, 0, 1, 1, negative 5, and 2, 7. Now I'm going to plot those on my graph. Oh, it's 2, negative 2, negative 5. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, make a point. Negative 1, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My board is off just a little bit here. 0, 1, 1, negative 5, and 2, 7, which is way up here again. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a look at my graph over here. I'm going to hide this list so I can see more about my graph here. And I want to make sure that my maximum points are on my table so that when I draw this that I do have maximum and minimum points, okay? So those values are my maximum minimum points and they are in my table so I should be able to go ahead and connect these points. So we're going to go up to this, down, and then back up. Knowing that this is a maximum point of 1, negative 1, 7. Let me write that better. And this guy right here is 1, negative 5. Okay, now those are the values that I need in order to make my increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, so remember, this is negative infinity out here. This is positive infinity. And we have to decide how my graph is increasing or decreasing. So here my graph is increasing to my maximum point. So my interval would be negative infinity to negative 1. Then from negative 1 down to positive 1, my graph is decreasing. So from negative 1 to 1, I have a decreasing interval. And then my graph is going to go back to an increase from 1 all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so with cubics, um, we are going to see either two increasing or two decreasing, and then one of the other. All right, let's go ahead and do the next graph. So I'm going to come over here to this arrow. I'm going to um, delete this out. I'm going to come back to this graph, and I'm going to erase everything that I had here so I can move it back down. And I'm going to graph the next graph. Okay, and then we're going to be done. So go down to the next graph here. Okay. Give me a second here. Okay, let's go ahead and um, get started on example number two. All right, so what's the degree of two? It's a four. How many turns? We could possibly say it has three, and we could say it possibly has four. So it has a max of four um, x-intercepts. It has a max of three turns. Right-hand behavior. The a in front is positive. Therefore, the graph is going to go up on the right. And then it is an even degree, which means it will also go up 
on the left because when it's even, it means they will do the same on both right and left hand side behavior. Okay, let's go over to our decimals graph and plug in our equation y equals x to the power of 4 okay um, negative 2x to the third power minus 5x squared plus 6x okay making sure that I typed it in correctly then I'm going to go to uh, my edit list, go to my table. I'm going to fill out my table. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, negative 8. 0, 0. 1, 0. And 2, negative 8. Now, I want to go back to the graph because I want to make sure that my graph has all the points that has the maximum and mins. Well, I notice that there is a min right here that is not on my table. So I got to make sure that when I do graph these points, negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, that I use these points right here as part of my graph. These minimums and maximums are really important. So not only do I need all these in my table, but I also need my max and min. So um, I need that negative 1. That's kind of covering. So I'm going to kind of cancel that out. I need um, this negative 1.3, negative 9. Negative 1.3, negative 9. Okay. And then 0, 0. And then 1, 0. And 2, negative 8, which is down here. And then I need to make sure that I get the mins and maxes that are there. So 0 0.5, 1.6, which is right there. And then 2.3, I think. Where is it? 2.3, negative 9. 2.3, negative 9, which is down here. Okay. So then I can go ahead and graph my graph. Oh, and then we also kind of need that point right there, which would be 3, 0. So 3, 0 would also be an ordered pair. Okay, so it looks something like that. Hopefully your graph looks a little bit better. Now we need all these points right here. That point was 0. 0.5, 1.56. And then we need this point down here, which was 2.3, negative 9. And we need that point, which was negative 1.3, negative 9. Now, those points are going to be important for our increasing and decreasing intervals. So our increasing intervals, well, we're going to start out and we're going to be decreasing right away. So it's going to be decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1.3. Then it's going to be increasing from negative 1.3 all the way up to 0.5. And then it's going to be decreasing again at 0.5 all the way to 2.3. And then it's going to be increasing to 2.3 to infinity. Now remember, our increasing and decreasing intervals are our x values at our max and min points. So you need to make sure that you have those in, if they're not in your table, you have to make sure that you plot them on your graph. Okay, that's all folks. We'll see you tomorrow.